was wondering if I could come and visit with you for a while. Would that be all right? Sure. Okay. Now, I got to ask you a question right away. Let's put our things down, because I know you've been working, but let's close our books for a moment, and that just to put to, just for the time being. You know, put your papers in your book so you can close your book, you know what page it is, and that, that way you don't lose anything there. Thank you so much. I have a question for you. So, you want to close your book there, please? Thank you. So, the question I have is this. You're fourth graders, right? Yeah. Now, we could do one of two things. I can ask you lots of questions, and you can give me the answers. Do you want to do that? Good. Or, if you want to ask me questions about the Catholic Church, about St. Vincent Paul Parish, about priests like Father Gama, or myself, or our deacons here, or about the bishop or the pope, you can ask those questions. So which do you think you want to do? Do you want me to ask you all the questions? Or do you want to ask me questions? What do you think? I need a response. If I get no response, I'm going to start asking you guys questions. What do you think? Aren't they, don't you have some questions that you could ask me? No? No? Okay. Well, let's let's start out. I'll ask you a question. But if you do have a question, raise your hand. Say, Father, what about this? Because usually, if you're thinking of it, somebody else would like to hear the answer too. Let's, uh, let's talk about what's coming up in two weeks from now. On February 17th. What's going on on February 17th? Besides somebody's birthday. I mean, I know they birthdays. Yes? Valentine's Day. Well, no, that's the 14th. You're close. You're close. That's uh, Sunday the 14th. What about Wednesday the 17th? Ash Wednesday. It's Ash Wednesday. Well, what's so important about Ash Wednesday? Are we all going to get ashes? We're going to wash our hands at ashes? No. What, what's going to happen? That's right. We're going to put the ash, the sign of the cross, on your forehead. Except this year, there's a problem. What's the problem this year? Yes. I have to That's right. I can't, like Father Dan or Father Gala, we can't be going up to you and making the sign of the cross on your forehead. We can't be touching you. Okay. So, if we can't do that, what are we going to do to give you ashes? You can't wipe your hands in them. You can't touch them on the forehead. Whoa. You know what the Pope does? The Pope takes a little bit of ashes. He asks the person to bend their head over. And he sprinkles a little bit of ashes in the hair. Now, that would be different, wouldn't it? Now, I know we're always trying to keep our hair looking so good, but what if we had to do it just one day at one mass? Do you think we could do that? I think we could do that. I think that's what we're gonna to have to do. We're gonna to have to probably, you're lucky, you're gonna be able to come to mass. We'll probably come to you just like we give communion. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a tiny bit, just a little bit, we're just gonna sprinkle it right above a person's head there and we're not even going to, remember how we usually say, remember you are dust and dust you shall return. We're not even going to say that. Just going to say it once. We're just going to quietly come to each person and bless them with holy ashes. You are the first guys to know about this. It's been a big secret. Can you guys keep a secret? No. No? no. <laughs> yeah, so of course we can keep it. Oh, wait a minute. Is this being recorded? Oh, we're in trouble. Okay, all right, that's okay. The word will get out. Okay, so, uh, let's see, now Lent. How many days are there in Lent? Is there 20 days, 60 days, 40 days, 50 days, 30 days? What do you think? Okay, there's six Sundays in Lent. How many days, so let's, let's figure it out. Well, here's our, here's our calendar. You have to have good eyes here. We're going to start it on Wednesday, the 17th of February. We're going to go all through February. We're going to go through all March. And we're going to finish, I believe it's April 3rd. It's this year. I believe it's Easter. I may be wrong with that. But how many days would that be? Maybe, let's see. That says it on there. Yes, it must be. 
Yes, I think it's April 3rd. So how many days do you think that is? 17. 17 or 70? 17. 17. Add 17 twice and then add 6. What do you get? 56. Well, okay. 17 once and add 17 a second time and add 6. Think 17 and 17 and 6. 34, you, 34 plus 6 is 40. It's 40 days of Lent. Now, wait a minute. What happened in the life of Jesus that was 40 days? Do you remember? Remember ever hearing how Jesus was in the desert for 40 days? Do you ever remember hearing about that? Nope. Well, I'll tell you what. When Jesus wanted to start helping people learn about him, he went away to pray first, and he went to the desert. Now, the desert here in the United States, you know, they've got these big, tall cacti plants, cactus plants. None of those where he was at. But what was there, he hardly ate anything. He hardly drank anything. He just prayed. But there was somebody else there who kept tempting him. Who could be tempting Jesus in the desert? Well, we got tempted to do something bad? Oh. No. So who would it be? The devil. the devil. Indeed, the devil himself. And so the devil thought, I'm going to tempt Jesus three times. First time, he's hungry. So he, and he said, you see those stones around you? You could make those into bread, and you could eat those. And Jesus said, no. I'm not going to listen to your temptation. Then the devil took him up to the temple where the, everybody was praying and all that. He says, Jesus, you're the son of God. If you just throw yourself down through this high wall, down below, your angels will catch you. And again, Jesus did not listen to him. Now the devil thought, ah, I will take him to the highest mountain in the area where he can see all the below. Now I'm going to ask Jesus this. All you have to do is just bow down and say that I'm, your, I'm in your power and you can have everything there. And this time, why didn't it happen? He said, I'm in your power. He said, I'm in your power. He said that he was tempted to be in his power, but he didn't do that. He didn't fall for it. He was strong and he resisted the devil the third time and now the devil left him. And so Jesus had defeated the devil in the desert. So for you and me, we go for 40 days praying to God the Father to be a better person, and we give up something. Now, do you remember what you've given up other years when you have was during Lent? Do you remember what you gave up? Yes, Tori? What, what, what was that? You, you gave up eating meat. Oh, that was hard. Wow, that's a sacrifice. What else? What would be another sacrifice that you guys could do? How about candy? Whoa. Oh, you love your candy. Whoa, that's what Jesus is trying to teach you, that there's something even more important than candy. Oh, what else would be hard to give up? How about pop? Ooh. How about ooh, electronics? That would be hard. That would be very hard. Don't know if we could do it, huh? Yeah. No. Oh. Well, see, why are you giving so here's the what's the point? What's the point of giving up all this to, to eat or drink? It's to feel like what? To feel good about yourself. Feel good about yourself and about somebody else that you feel closer to because he went through something similar. And that is? You feel like Jesus. That's right, Jesus went through that. So if we can, we can be aware that we give up something because he gave up something, it brings us closer to his Father. And that is wonderful. Now, let's see. So a lot of times people give up something. But there's also people who do something special during Lent. For example, what would be special that you could do extra for somebody else during this season of Lent? What comes to your mind? What could you do extra? 
Yes. Yeah, you could help somebody who needs, needs food or needs help that way. What else could we do? What do you think? What do we think here? Did you know I, I got to tell you something? Maybe you haven't heard this from Father Dan before. The eyes are the window to the soul. Did you ever hear that before? Nope. Oh, let me tell you. The eyes are the window to your soul. What does that mean? It means when someone sees your eyes and they see you're listening to them and you're in conversation with them, it's like you're connecting. It's as if you're connecting in your soul. The eyes are the window to your soul, to the most important part. So I want to see all your eyes because the eyes are the window to the soul. Okay. And if you're not looking at me, I'm going to be disappointed. So keep looking. There you go. I can do it. Now, we're talking about doing something that we're giving up and that we're going to do special during the season of Lent. Now, let's see. What else could we do? Is there anything that you might suggest? Anything that, you know, we could do? Oh! Now we're talking, we can pray in a little different way. Maybe a little different, maybe a little special way. Now, do you guys ever get the chance to pray the Stations of the Cross? Have you ever prayed the Stations of the Cross? Oh my gosh. Maybe, maybe there'd be enough time to see if we could do that sometime. It's so, it's about Jesus in his last day carrying the cross. And we know it's hard because it's going to end up right there where he's on the cross there. But we remember that and pray. We think, oh, Jesus did that for me. How much he wants me to do a sacrifice for someone else. I want to make sure I don't overstay my time here. It's 7.05. Okay. So we're going to see about giving up something special. We're going to see if we can do something special. And as we just heard, consider doing something different in prayer. Maybe praying the Stations of the Cross, walking with Jesus that way. It could be just, oh, I don't know, there's all kinds of little things you could do at home. I used to give up pot for Lent. Then I gave up chocolate for Lent. Then I gave up candy for Lent. Oh my gosh, it was hard. But you know what? It taught me how to sacrifice, that I couldn't always have what I wanted. And that was really good. But I'm going to stop with this for a minute. Because I want to ask you, remember remember I said, if you've got any questions, you can ask them. If you don't, I've got more questions for you. So what do you think? Do you have any questions you want to ask about Father Gama, about myself, about our church, about God, about Pope Francis, about Archbishop Lucas? Any of that you can ask. Otherwise, I'm going to be asking you some more questions. What do you think? Do you have any questions at all? Okay, let me ask you some more of that. So, Lent starts with Ash Wednesday. We talked about the ashes being sprinkled on top of us. That's going to be very different than any time before. And But we're also going to do something on Fridays that are different during Lent. What would that be? What is something that we give up on Fridays in Lent? Because we're against sacrificing something. Tori, what did you give up? Meat. You gave up meat, and you know what? Everybody else has got to give up meat on Fridays. Everybody who's you know out of junior high, older, we all sacrifice. That's why fish fries so popular because, oh, we can't eat any meat. So sometimes people go to fish fries, yeah. But the whole idea is what Jesus did was sacrifice in the desert, not having hardly anything to eat. We sacrifice in that way as well. Then for the adults, those who are 14 or older, I should say, we have two days of the year where we can only eat one big meal. And Ash Wednesday is one of them and Good Friday is the other. Now, why do you think that would be, that we're supposed to 
what, what do you think, why do you think we're giving up something to eat on those two days? What's special about Good Friday? Sounds like Bad Friday. What's good about Good Friday? Yes? He got crucified, huh? Yes, you're right. That's the day Jesus was crucified. So because he suffered for us, we give up something as well. So we can feel closer to him that way. That's very good. Okay, now, let's see, I'll make sure. Oh, God, it's a two minute warning. You're sure not gonna ask any questions? I thought sure this class would have done it, but that's okay, all right. So then in Lent, some people go to church extra in the mornings or in the evenings because they want to pray, they want to receive Holy Communion. So when they do that, they feel closer to Jesus that way as well. Now, how about you guys? What do you, how do you feel closer to Jesus? What helps you? When do you feel closer to Jesus? I'm going to ask you now. Yes, you're going to save the class. Yes. When you pray. And when is the better time for you to pray? Is it early in the morning or is it late at night? Yes? I pray at night. At night? Now, how many of you would like to pray at night? All right, everybody. How about the morning? How about how many of us like to get up early to pray? Whoa, okay, very good. I have to too, because by the time my night comes, I'm very tired, and I can't pray very long. So it's good. Yes? Uh, sometimes I can't go to sleep because my dog, uh, we got a new dog, oh. and he's so noisy. Oh, yes, new dogs are. Now, did you ever, do you guys ever wake up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to sleep? Does that ever happen yes. to you? Okay, I've got a secret to tell you. The secret is, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't get to sleep, and you know you've got to get to sleep because you've got to get up in the morning, pray the rosary. You know how to pray the rosary? We haven't learned how to pray the rosary yet. Oh my gosh, that would be so good. I do that, and I pray, you know, there's 50 beads on the, on the rosary. I don't hardly ever finish the rosary because I'm laying there and I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. I'm praying. All of a sudden, fall asleep. It's, it's amazing. Uh-oh, my time is up. But think about that. Maybe sometime, we, if we, I don't know when we normally learn about the, learning to pray the rosary, but if we really nice, and I don't know, stations across, you have to see if you'd have time to do all that. Father's giving a lot of extra homework here, but you would love it. You would love it. So I'll see you again in two weeks when we have Ash Wednesday, and you come to get your ashes. And I think it's going to be different this year. Shh. Don't tell anybody about it. Okay? God bless you. I'll see you again soon. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.